Yesterday's lesson focused on division using the area model. Today we're going to focus on division using distributive property, but I'm going to show you both the area model and distributive property so you can see how they're very similar and how we can use both properties interchangeably. It really just depends on which one you like best. So here we have a problem, 42 divided by 2. Yesterday what we did to solve this problem was we drew our rectangle, we placed our 2 on one side, and we had our total of 42 that we were going to take away from. And we thought to ourselves, 2 times what gets me close to 42 without going over, and I'm going to take pieces away. So maybe you thought about 2 times 10, which gives you 20, and you would take 20 away from your total and be left with 22. Maybe you do another 2 times 10 to get another 20. Take that 20 away, you'd be left with 2, and then 2 times 1 would give you 2. Take that 2 away, and you'd be left with 0. In order to get your quotient, you would add all of those pieces together. 10 plus 1 plus 10 would give you 21 as your quotient, or as the answer to your division problem. What we're going to do with ex the distributive property is very, very similar, except instead of drawing it in the area model, we're going to draw it like we did distributive property for multiplication. Now, the difference between distributive property for this, for division and distributive property for multiplication is when we did distributive property for multiplication, just like when we did the area model for multiplication, we expanded one of our factors. In division, we're not going to expand anything. Instead, we have to think just like we did when we did our area model. What pieces can we take away from our total? So, just like we just did with the area model, we're going to take our total of 42 and place that off to the side. Now what we're going to do is we're going to break this problem into pieces that we can solve. So instead of having 42 divided by 2, maybe we would break it into 20 divided by 2. 20 divided by 2. So what I'm going to do over at my 42 is I'm going to take 20 away, and I'm going to be left with 22. I'm going to add now maybe I'm going to do another 20 divided by 2 because that's another fact that I know. And I'm going to subtract that 20. Those 20s I'm subtracting from my whole of 42. And I'm left with 2. And then I know how to divide 2 divided by 2. There's a lot more division facts that go on here and that's okay. Maybe you like looking at the division more than you like thinking about multiplication. Now we need to do some division. How many times does 2 go into 20? 10 times plus. How many times does 2 go into 20? 10 times plus. How many times does 2 go into 2? 1 time. And when you add these pieces, you're going to get 21 as your quotient. I get the same answer. But what I'm doing here is I'm breaking my 42, or I'm breaking my total, into pieces that I know. Again, let's take a look at what the area model looked like. I had my rectangle, I had my 2, I broke it into 20, and then I had my 10 on top. I broke it into 20, I had my 10 on top, and then I broke it again into 2 and had my 1 on top, and I added those pieces. All of the same components are in my area model and in my distributive property. Just depends on which you favor. Let's take a look at another problem. Here we have 56 divided by 4. So I need to think about four facts that I know that I can divide into evenly. So I'm going to put my 56 off to the side, and maybe, you know what, I know that 40 goes into, or 4 goes into 40 evenly, so that's what I would start with. I would start with 40 divided by 4, because that's a problem that I know. Now I'm going to take this 40, and I'm going to subtract it from my whole over off to the side, so I know how much I have left to work with. This gives me 16 left to work with. I know a problem that gets me 16 when I'm thinking about my 4s, so here I'm going to have 16 divided by 4. Now all I need to do, again subtract that from my whole, is to divide these two pieces and add them together. 
40 divided by 4 gives me 10, plus 16 divided by 4 gives me 4. I'm going to add these two pieces together, and I get my quotient of 14. Let's take a look at the area model. I draw my rectangle, place my 4 on one side, place my 56, or my total, off to the side so I can subtract, and maybe I'd start with 4 times 10. 4 times 10 gives me 40, so I'd subtract 40 from my whole, and I'd be left with 16. Then I know how I could get 16. 4 times 4 gives me 16, and I'd subtract 16 from my whole, and I'd be left with 0. So I would add my 10 and my 4 together, and then that, of course, gives me 14, just like I got with my expanded form or distributive property. So either way I did this, I ended up with the same answer. My quotient is 14. These are our two different ways we've learned so far. So we have the distributive property and we have the area model for division. And they look very similar to what we did for multiplication. I want you to give this problem a try. 96 divided by 8. You could use either the distributive property or the area model. I'd like you to try both. Figure out which one of these properties works for you. Go ahead and give it a try. When I solve this problem, I'm going to start using the distributive property so I can show you that property since that's what this lesson's focused on. I'm going to think about my 8 facts, and I know that 8 goes into 80 evenly, so I'm going to pull an 80 out, 80 divided by 8, and I'm going to pull this 80 out here, which means I need to subtract it from my whole, and that leaves me with 16 left. I know that fact as well. 16 divided by 8. That's a pretty easy fact. So now I'm going to subtract my 16 from my whole, and I'm left with 0. All I need to do is find these two quotients and then add them together. 8 goes into 80 10 times. 8 goes into 16 2 times. 10 plus 2 gives me 12. That is my quotient. I'm going to use my area model to check my work. I'm going to have my 8 on one side and my 96 off to the side for me to subtract. And I need to think about my 8 facts. I know that 8 times 10 gives me 80. So I'm going to subtract 80 from my whole, and I'm left with 16. And then 8 times 2 gives me 16. I'm going to subtract 16 from my whole, and that's left with 0. And then I'm going to add up what's on top of my rectangle. 10 plus 2 gives me 12. Either way, I have 12 as my quotient. Here's your next problem I want you to solve, 124 divided by 4. Even though this problem is a little bit larger, we can follow the same steps that we just followed to solve this problem. Go ahead and give this one a try. If I'm using my area model to solve this problem, I would draw my rectangle, and I'd start thinking about my facts. If I'm using my distributive property, I would think about my whole number of 124. Is there a fact that I know that can get me pretty close, or should I take smaller leaps at this problem? Well, if I look at my two greatest place values, I see that there's a 12 there, and I know that 4 goes into 12 evenly. So if 4 goes into 12 evenly, I know that it goes into 120 evenly, because this 12 is 12 tenths. So I'm going to divide 120 divided by 4. I'm going to take this 120, and I need to subtract it from my whole, or my dividend, to see what I have left to divide, and I'm left with 4. That's also a division fact that I know, 4 divided by 4. I'm going to subtract that 4 and left with 0 there, and I need to solve these two pieces. 4 goes into 120, 4 goes into 12 3 times, so it goes into 120 30 times, and 4 goes into 4 1 time, and I'd add my two partial quotients together, and I'd be left with 31 as my quotient. I can also use my area model to solve this, or maybe just to check my work. I'm going to draw my rectangle, and I have my 4 off to the side. I'm going to take my 124 over here so I can subtract from that total. And I need to think about four facts that are going to get me close to 124. Maybe I didn't think about 4 times 30. Maybe I started with 4 times 10. 
That gives me 40. I'm going to subtract 40 from my total, and I'm left with 84. Oh, I see my 80 there. I know that 4 times 20 gives me 80. So now I'm going to subtract my 80, and I'm left with 4. And 4 times 1 gives me 4. All I need to do to get my quotient is add up my partial quotients on top. 10 plus 20 plus 1 gives me 31 as my quotient. That's the same thing that I got using my distributive property, so my quotient is 31. Our next problem, go ahead and solve this problem, 624 divided by 6. If I'm using my distributive property, I see my 6 in my hundreds place, and I have a 6 as my divisor. How perfect is that? So I can have my total off to the side, 624, and then I know that 6 goes into 600. So that's the first problem I'm going to pull out, 600 divided by 6. When I pull that 600 out, I need to subtract it from my whole off to the side, and I'm left with 24 left. Oh, and that's another fact that I know. I know that 24 divided by 6 gives me an even number, and that, or that gives me a whole number, rather. And then I subtract my 24 over here from my total, and I'm left with 0, so I don't have any more division facts that I need to work out. I'm going to solve for these two partial quotients and then add them together. 6 goes into 600 100 times, and then I'm going to add my other piece. 6 goes into 24 4 times. 100 plus 4 gives me 104 as my quotient. I'm going to check my work using my area model, so I'm going to draw my rectangle and place my whole off to the side of 624. I'm going to place my 6 on one side. I need to get all the way to 624, so I'm going to multiply 6 times 100, because I know that's going to give me 600, which is pretty close to 624. I'm going to subtract 600 here, get 24, and then I know that 6 times 4 gives me 24, Subtract my 24, and I'm left with 0. And I'm going to add these pieces up. And when I do that, my partial quotients add to 104 as my quotient. Alrighty. Let's take a look at some word problems. Joshua collected 530 pieces of trash in 5 hours to help clean up the beach. How many pieces of trash did he collect in 1 hour? Set up your problem and then solve using either the distributive property or the area model. If I'm setting this problem up, I'd have 530 divided by 5. I'm going to go ahead and start using my distributive property. I'm going to take my 530 and place it off to the side. That's my total that I need to break into my pieces. Now I'm going to start breaking it down. I see my 5 as my divisor and my 5 in my hundreds place. I know that 5 goes into 500 evenly, so that's a problem I'm going to pull out. I'm going to pull 500 divided by 5. Now I need to take my 500 and subtract it from my whole. That leaves me with 30. Well, that's also a problem that I know. I know that 30 divided by 5 is going to give me a nice fact to work out. So I'm going to take this 30 and subtract it from what I have left, and I have 0 left. Now I'm going to find my partial quotients. So 500 divided by 5 gives me 100, plus 30 divided by 5 gives me 6. I'm going to add my partial quotients up, and I'm left with 106. I'm going to check my work using the area model. So I draw a rectangle. I'm going to take my 530 and place it off to the side so I can subtract from my whole. I'm going to place my divisor of 5 on the side. Now, I need to think about some 5 facts that are going to start getting me close to 530. Well, 5 times 100, that's a good fact to start with because I know that's going to give me 500. I'm going to subtract 500 here, and I'm left with 30. And then I also know that in order to get 30, I can multiply 5 times 6. That gives me 30. I subtract 30, and I'm left with 0. And now I'm going to add my two partial quotients together, and I have 106 as my answer, the same as I got for my distributive property. 
So my question asks me how many pieces of trash did he collect in one hour? He collected 106 pieces of trash. Way to go, Josh. That's a lot of trash. All right, last problem. At a concert, 279 seats are separated into nine equal rows. How many seats are in each row? Go ahead and solve this problem using either the distributive property or the area model. I would check your work as well with whichever one you did not use. If we were to set this problem up, we would have 279 divided by 9. Using my distributive property, I'd think about facts that I know. Now, I have a number in the hundreds. This is kind of tricky, maybe. So maybe I'm going to start with 90 divided by 9. That's a safe place for me to start. I have my 279 off to the side, and I'm going to subtract 90 from that whole. And now I'm left with 189. So I'm going to add my next piece. Maybe that's still something that's super tricky for me, so I'm going to take another 90 out of there. I can just keep taking chunks away until I'm comfortable, more comfortable with the number I have left. So I'm going to subtract 90 again. And when I do that, I'm left with 99. Oh, 99. I know that 9 times 11 gives me 99. So I'm going to take my 99, my whole 99, and divide it by 9, and then subtract 99 since I used it over here. And I'm left with 0. So I'm going to find all of these partial quotients and then add them together. 9 goes into 90 10 times, plus 9 goes into 90 10 times, plus 9 goes into 99 11 times. And when I add these three partial quotients up, I get a total of 31 as my quotient. I can check my work using the area model by starting off with a rectangle. I'm going to that work off to the side so that I can put my total back up here and subtract my parts. All right, and I have my 9 on this side. Maybe I start here with 9 times 20. 9 times 20 gives me 180, so I'd subtract 180 from my whole. And then I'm left with 99 again, and I know that 11 times 9 gives me 99, so I'm going to subtract 99. I'm left with 0. I add these two partial quotients up, and I have 31. So my question asks me how many seats are in each row? 31 seats in each row. When it comes to our distributive property, it's important that we're comfortable with the pieces that we're breaking our number into, and that we're continuously subtracting until we have nothing left. We can always also check our work with multiplication, and we can check with a different division method like the area model. That's our lesson for today. Tomorrow we're going to do a review of everything we've learned so far in this chapter, and then we're going to look at partial quotients, which is very like partial products for multiplication. See you then!